love her. Now, a Norwich man who weighs 39 stone has defended plans that will see thousands of pounds spent building him a new bungalow, especially designed around his obesity. 67-year-old Michael Willimant insists that he and his wife Heather would rather stay in their current council home, but they're being forced to move. Here's Alba Patel's report. A 39 stone, Michael Willamont has become virtually housebound. He needs a wheelchair to get around and is dependent on his wife Heather as his full-time carer. But today he's found himself at the centre of controversy after it emerged that a new house is being built for the couple in Norwich, specifically designed for Michael because of his obesity. Michael says he's concerned that people will get the wrong idea about the plans. He insists he'd prefer to stay in his current council property, but it is being knocked down and they have to move. Um, but due to the demolition of the site, um, there's a reason we're moving. So you have to go? We have to go, basically, yeah. The Willemans will move to their new house here in January. It's just a few yards from their old place. The rooms here have been specifically adapted for Michael's needs. When Michael was married 44 years ago, he weighed 18 stone. He says he started putting on a lot of weight after taking eczema medication prescribed by his GP. He's adamant he has tried to lose weight. I have tried. I've been on the Weight Watchers diet. I've been on the Cambridge diet. And I just put the weight back on again. Norwich City Council claims reports that the two-bedroom bungalow will cost £300,000 to build are wrong. The land for the new house was sold by the council to Pedder's Way Housing Association. It aims to pay for the construction using a mixture of private funds and grant money. In a statement, Norwich City Council say, we have a duty to look after the needs of all our tenants and to make sure that in any resettlement program, people are treated equally. Sometimes this will involve developing properties in partnership with housing associations for people with disabilities which are not available within our existing housing stock. Michael and Heather are keen to put this affair behind them and they're looking forward to moving into their new home where they can spend more time together and with their beloved dogs. Alpa Patel, Anglia News. Right, it's 12 minutes past six. More news and the weather still to come tonight. We're gonna well, more news now from your part of the region. And an Essex-based MP has stepped down as head of the Common Standards and Privileges Committee pending an inquiry into his second home allowance claims. The Conservative, David Curry, represents Skipton and Ripon in Yorkshire, but he also lives in Saffron Walden. He's facing allegations that he claimed almost £30,000 towards the cost of a property in his constituency that he doesn't use. He denies doing anything wrong, but is standing down while the inquiry takes place. A murder investigation has been launched in Suffolk today after the body of a woman was discovered at a house. Yes, the woman was found at Milesford near Wickham Market at around a quarter to seven. A man was later arrested after crashing his van on the nearby A12. Well, Lorna Ramsey has this report. Every piece of rubbish is checked, every heap of leaves searched through. This afternoon, police officers scoured the verges of the A12 at Wickham Market, near to where a murder suspect crashed a van. The 59-year-old driver has been arrested after a woman named locally as Sharon Green was stabbed to death at this house in Milesford. Police have removed the van this morning, but some of the debris from the crash is still here. The driver was taken to Ipswich Hospital, where he's receiving treatment for spinal injuries under police guard. Neighbours say this building used to be the Bell Inn, but was turned into a private house around seven years ago. They kept themselves to themselves, and she seemed quite pleasant. Every time I walked past her, she'd wave and say hello. Community leaders in Milesford say the village is trying to come to terms with such a violent crime on their doorstep. It's a very serious thing to have happened, obviously, by any standards anywhere. But for a small, rather sort of quiet, sleepy Suffolk village, it's deeply shocking. Detectives are urging anyone who was in this area between midnight and 7 o'clock this morning to get in contact with them. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Milesford.
decision on a northern bypass for Norwich could be made by Christmas following the first adjournment debate called by the new Norwich North MP. Chloe Smith addressed the Commons last night and argued that the road would remove thousands of cars from the city centre and suburbs and allow for greener transport choices. Opponents say it will blight a rural area. This road scheme stands up in its own right. It is vital for jobs, prosperity and people's everyday lives. It is crucial in opening up a range of transport choices, public, private and green. Busy night in the Commons, wasn't it? Now, Colchester's Castles received more than a quarter of a million pounds in lottery funding to carry out some much-needed refurbishments. The managers of the Norman Castle will spend the money on updating the castle itself and its displays. The museum there tells the story of the town's early development and its history as Roman Britain's first capital. Now there's an international flavour to this evening's football. Yep, Ipswich boss Roy Keane has waded into the debate over whether or not the Republic of Ireland should replay their World Cup playoff match against France after Thierry Henry's handball. While the odds are continuing to drop on Norwich City manager Paul Lambert taking over the Scotland team. Here's Donovan Blake. Ipswich boss Roy Keane walked out on the chance to play for Ireland in the World Cup in 2002. Now the current squad's hopes of playing in next year's tournament are over after FIFA's ruling not to replay their playoff game against France. But instead of moaning at the governing body or the officials who missed that most talked about handball incident, Keane says the responsibility rests with the players. They can complain all they want. It's not going to change. France are going to the World Cup. Get over it. If that was my team, I'd go into the dressing room and I wouldn't even mention handball. I'd just say, why didn't someone put their head in it? Defenders are more focused about players. There's only one ball. Just go and head it. Where's my goalkeeper? The ball bunks in the six-yard box from a free kick just inside the halfway line. That's what I'd be asking. Nothing to do with the handball. You can guarantee Keane will be underlining that to his Ipswich squad as they try to continue their recovery in the Championship against Sheffield Wednesday tomorrow. So Ipswich just a point above bottom place Peterborough in the Championship and there's just a point between two of our regional rivals in League One. Colchester in third, just above Norwich in fourth. But the U's last performance here didn't impress their manager. Yes, Aidy Boothroyd warns he's not afraid to change his team for their trip to Oldham after last Saturday's poor show against Exeter. Illness to staff and players, though, may force his hand. As for Colchester's former manager Paul Lambert, his appointment as Norwich boss is now the subject of a football disciplinary commission with the club's failing to agree compensation. But the bookies reckon he's a strong tip to become the next Scotland manager. At least Lambert has good news ahead of their trip to Southampton with goalkeeper Fraser Forster staying on loan for the rest of the season. Finally, Steve Tilson Southend looked to avoid three straight defeats for the first time this season as they host the MK Dons tonight. Donovan Blake, Anglia News. On to managers of a different kind now. Managers of the Norfolk and Suffolk Broads, no less, have been meeting to discuss the future of the waterways. The Broads Authority says major changes are needed if they're to survive the effects of climate change, although longer tourist seasons could also prove beneficial issues, such as the height of bridges, would also need addressing. The midnight hour in Norwich last night and fans of the Twilight Vampire series turned out to the regional premiere of the latest film. New Moon is expected to draw record box office takings this weekend after the last film in the series made more than £41 million on its opening weekend.